Thursday, October 15th, and it's warm today. It's about 70 degrees, and it's been kind of windy, but that's supposed to calm down kind of as the evening goes on, but looks like it's kind of picking up again. We're at a pretty small tree here, so we're getting rocked around just a bit, but I think if this wind calms down, we got the makings of a, a good sit. We got a cold front coming through tonight. I'm hoping that can kind of jumpstart deer movement. It's pretty overcast right now, and uh, I'm just hoping that we can see some good daylight movement. It's two days before the opener of muzzleloader season. Every year, I end up seeing a good buck with a muzzleloader in my hand, and muzzleloader is still only here in PA, so I want to get my doe tags filled and just stick with the bow the entire year. So I'm hoping this little radish plot here in front of us is going to be the spot where we can get that last tag filled. And uh, like I said, I like what we got going on tonight, so hopefully this wind calms down and we can get it done. Despite the wind continuing throughout the evening, deer still hit the field early and moved towards the radish plot. This has definitely been an interesting hunt. I've got nothing for camera light, so making do with the silhouette, I guess, but we just had a mature doe come out at the far end of the field. I've got no camera light to, to get it on film, but it was good to see it. And I think, you know, the fact that this wind never calmed down and we still saw, I think, seven deer, says a lot about this spot. We got that cold front coming through tonight. I think we'll try back in here tomorrow evening and hopefully, with a little better wind conditions, they'll come out a little earlier and hopefully give us a shot, but it was definitely worth coming here tonight and seeing that. It's definitely some good, uh, good information. Well, it's Friday, October 16th, and we're back in the same stand we sat in last night, where despite the pretty bad wind conditions, we still saw about seven deer, and I'm hoping even though it's kind of windy tonight, that the cold front's gonna get them moving. It's not nearly as windy, so hopefully it doesn't bother them. Hopefully with this cold front they move, and hopefully we can get a shot. Much like the previous evening, deer were on their feet early on this hunt. Soon, a few does at the field, one of which was clearly much bigger and older.
that was cool. That was a big old doe. I didn't range it. I had the finish line range 17 yards and she was five, six yards behind that. So I think 23 yards. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna get drawn back, you know, a big old doe like that. I kind of thought she'd catch me, but I didn't have much choice just with this setup. But that worked perfectly. And uh, it's, let's see, 625 right now. Legal shooting light ends at 649. So I'm gonna give her a little bit of time get down here shortly and see what I can see, you know, while it's light out. And hopefully that's it. Um, hopefully that's three doe tags filled. So, slight change of plans. I got down, I looked, I didn't see any immediate sign. And, uh, it's gonna be dark here in about probably 10 minutes. So, I'm gonna go back to the house. I'm gonna get a light that'll give her plenty of time. And, uh, we'll take a look at the footage and everything. But from what I saw, I don't think she's too far beyond where we last saw her. Unfortunately, what I didn't see was just how far she managed to duck and turn before the arrow impacted her. But the arrow showed positive signs, so we began tracking, but the blood was minimal and there was just very little to follow. I just can't figure how there's not more blood than there was and I didn't get a lot of it on film because it was a lot of just trying to crawl through the brush and you know we spent close to three and a half hours in there it's midnight and there's just there's not much to go on a lot of that tracking was just going back and forth trying to find you know a spot of blood to figure out a direction and it's so thick it's difficult to maneuver in there and maybe you know, I'm gonna go back in the morning, maybe in daylight I'll be able to figure out a little more, you know, maybe something will be more obvious, but just, I've watched the shot like 10 times by now, seeing the arrow, I know she can't be far, I know that's gotta be back of the lungs, maybe liver, there was some darker blood in there too, but I cannot possibly figure out what happened, but uh, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna go back in the morning, um, probably gonna wait till 9 or 10 just because tomorrow's the opening day of muzzleloader season and I'd like to disturb as few uh, things as possible for anybody else that might be out so we'll probably wait till then um, and we'll see see if we can find her then I hope so I mean that was a big mature doe I'd love to uh, to close that story out properly but I'll we'll have to see what happens after an uneventful morning buck hunt we went back to look again well, we found her. Not exactly how we wanted to, but uh, it went down to 29 last night, and it's still only in the 40s now, so hopefully the meat's still gonna be good. We'll have to see when we get into it. But uh, we pretty much just ended up with a body search this morning. We ran into the same problem we had last night, just no blood from that last spot, and uh, walked around for a little while. It only took about 30 minutes. I stumbled upon some blood, probably only 40 yards from here. You can see the flies are just getting all over her, but uh, yeah, there was a bunch more blood right after that and she was laying right here. So luckily we got her. Um, it's going to be quite a pain to get her out of here. This terrain is not nice. I didn't even bring the camera down in here. Um, originally I've got the GoPro now, but you about need both hands to walk down through some of this stuff, but we're going to get going on this because obviously it's getting warmer and, uh, it's going to be tough to get her out of here, but we found her. Well, we found her and, uh, Got her out of there and like I said, it's been cold, so hopefully the meat's gonna be in good shape. We're gonna hurry this up and get the hide off her and everything and uh, hopefully it'll be good. But that's the third doe tag filled. It's October 17th, so I've got over a month till the end of archery and hopefully we can get a buck down with this bow as well, but it's been good so far. That was a little less than ideal the way everything went, but we found her and I guess that's all that matters. So we're gonna go get her taken care of. The shot ended up being straight through the liver. Luckily it wasn't any farther back or a lot of the meat likely wouldn't have been good due to the amount of time it took to recover her. 
So far I couldn't ask for a better start to the 2020 archer season, all dough tags filled before the beginning of muzzleloader, and over a month to spend hunting and attempting to fill my buck tag with a bow as well. I can't wait to focus on bucks going forward, and that starts next week, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then!